But yes, Karis was preaching on Sunday. It was epic. Um, a real word in season. Just epic works. Partly why we wanted to follow on because Karis kicked open a door of revelation for us all. And we have just been hearing God on this call to be a people of wildness. And so we wanted to do this particular episode because of that. But if you have not heard Karis's preach, then go to our YouTube channel, catch up on our Sunday gathering. Worship was epic. There were prophetic revelation words. And then Karis's um, significant word of the Lord that she brought. And you're going to want to make sure that you listen to that as well after this episode, because it really brings a full picture of what God is saying to the church. So we're going to dive straight in with the word of the Lord and really go after just some of what we are hearing God say. And God has been talking uh, to the three of us and to others for quite some time about wildness, about encounter, about being a people of the spirit, about living in the spirit, led by the spirit, keeping in step with the spirit as well. And all of us have been feeling this pull into more encounter, this pull into more revelation. And if you feel like that, why don't you just write in the, the chat, yeah, I've been feeling that I've been pulled into more encounter. I feel like I'm being pulled into a deeper place of meeting with God. But we're hitting this again, that we are not as free from the religious spirit as we think we are. And God started to speak to me about how we have misunderstood the religious spirit. And for years we have thought that religion's main aim was about structures and about traditions. It was about what we could build in our own strength. But I believe that the spirit of religion's first aim is predominantly about making you encounterless. It is a spirit, a demon of disconnection. Religion is about disconnection. And when you are not connected to the spirit and in continual encounters, when you are not in that place of meeting with God, then you fall back into building man-made structures. And you end up in this place of observation rather than of encounter. And I always find it interesting that the first man-made invention we see in scripture is the clothes that Adam and Eve make as a sign of their disconnection from God. And they got disconnected. And the first thing they did was build or create a man-made invention, a man-made structure, the clothing that hid them because they were disconnected. And God is saying, look, I am dealing with disconnection in my people. I am dealing where with the spirit of religion has made you an encounterless people. And you will be those who don't observe, but encounter. And I think when we talk about encounter, Often we actually accidentally mean observation. We observed something in the spirit realm. We observed a vision. We observed the yeah. truth. We watched something rather than encounter, which is much more about participation. It is about union. It is about connection. It is about the edges, the lines between God and us being blurred, this fusion of who we are. And the Pharisees, they were those who could observe, but not encounter. And their logic, their history, their study over years got in the way of their ability to encounter Jesus. And so they missed out on that opportunity to let go of their traditions and to be caught up in the flow of God. And God is saying, look, I will have you as an encounter filled people, not an encounter less people those who are connected and not disconnected and i believe that this is a word of liberation for some of you that have struggled to encounter god you have struggled to meet with god and you have been washed by this demon of religion and even as we start to speak and as you come under the sound of our voices that religion assignment is going to break and you're yeah. going to be released into a new momentum of encounter where you don't observe 
but you participate, where you don't watch, but you have an encounter that transforms your entire world, where you are connected and not disconnected. And I would yeah. speak that over you that even now that starts to happen. Anna. Yes, absolutely. This is it's such a key, isn't it? I think we are so good at observing and seeing and being ones, even when we are corporately together, of having this kind of consumer understanding of I will sit and just consume and watch but actually God is coming and he is breaking us out of that consumer and that observation mindset and pulling us into encounter because encounter when we are encountering God it should look like something on the other side it should yeah. have an effect in our being it should look like with like we should look more like Jesus on the outside there should be something in us that changes when we come out of the place of encounter that actually if you look through scriptures the encounters when God turns up and he meets with his people it changes their lives it moves them in a different direction you know even Moses who shone because he was in the place of encounter and that you know you see this time and time again don't you of God empowering his people through the place of encounter that it actually physically looks like something and for me this has really been where I've been pressing in where I'm like it's easy to to look it's easy to see it's easy to kind of have the warm and fuzzy feelings of the spirit being near me but actually God I want it to look like something for the fruitfulness of the place of encounter to be manifest mm. around me and I want to get to a place where I'm so in the place of encountering him of being close to where he is that it looks like something that I can say like like Peter my shadow can heal because I've so consumed the fullness of who he is in the place of encounter and I think mm. where we just observe we learn and we grow and there's a place for that and even as we grow in our trust of the Lord and our maturity the observation is helpful but this is not the time for just observation in encounter it is time like you said Sam for the real physical manifestation of his presence and it's where I think it's our entire senses, our smell, our touch, our taste, our yeah. hearing, yeah. everything to come into the fullness of what it looks like to experience him and then to also then carry that wherever we go. And I think that's the key, isn't it? We know that there is a place where we haven't just observed when we come out of encounter and we are carrying something of the glory and the weightiness of who he is. Very good. Yeah, Karis. Yeah, and I think... Ultimately, when we have this kind of mentality, I think we have it a lot, especially in the kind of Western church where, and we've kind of got to the point ever since lockdown, where just our life and church experience is very observational because we're very much behind a screen. And I know that sounds a little bit ironic because you're currently watching us on screen, but there's there's something of, um, there's something of participation that happens in encounter. Because even Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. There's a doing that happens with encounter. You know, God, God Jesus goes, encounters his Father, and then he goes and he does there should always be a transformational aspect to encounter with the lord and yeah. encounter is meant to transform you it's never meant to just be um like a pen on your timeline where you remember something that happened where you got to know god a little bit more but the knowing of god is meant to transform your life an encounter is about the knowing of god and then allowing him to change you because you know him more and you've encountered who he is so in order, in order for us to actually engage with this, we have to have a transformational mindset. We have to say goodbye to observation and say hello to participation with the encounter and the spirit of God. And that's what we're talking about today. Mm, very good. I'm going to kick the conversation back to you both in a minute, just with something we hadn't prepared. I would love for you both to share and maybe a, a recent or even historic encounter that actually changed you where you know I have met, I have not just observed, but I have met with God. There has been a fusion and in me, I have been transformed. Uh, whether that was a liberation or a strengthening or a release. And I want you in the comments to start to type even just a line or two uh, of your own stories, maybe a moment in the last week or in the last couple of weeks 
where you encountered God, that it changed you. And this rhythm of encounter that we need to start to, in our conversations, perpetuate. And I think in particularly the Western world, we love the conversation of, here's what I learned this week. Here's where I expanded my knowledge. And that is right, because we want to be growing in our knowledge of Christ, our knowledge of of truth but as well there is this sense of well what did i encounter this week where was there an encounter and i have been having over the last 10 days just this encounter with the breath of god where it has been like a sound and a dance and a movement and i have felt the breath of god in me and in my bones not just in my lungs but in my bones on my skin and the moments of turning and feeling just the the blowing of god the the god who makes things new and if you heard me on sunday you'll have heard some of the overflow that this this thing of god saying to me i am an expert at making things new my expertise is in the area of making things new it's what i do i make rivers in the desert i make springs in the wasteland i make things new and for me this newness that in god what i can be so new i can be made new continually not just the new creation of salvation and not just the new creation of coming to christ and of being baptized but the daily being made new the mercies that are new every morning that are extended and i can feel myself being transformed uh, even inside as i start to talk about those encounters because i wasn't having a vision and that's often i am in vision mode I wasn't having a vision and I wasn't in a dream and I wasn't in a trance, but it's been in every little moment of the feeling of the wind and the breath of God, where it's in me and I feel this fusion that there's transformation. And that is for you. And some of you are yeah. just starting to type in the comments some of your personal encounters that you have had where there was a sense, you know, Kareem, you're saying there, God met you and he took away some of the remaining grief from the passing of some close family members and that there was an instant lifting off of this. You know, Aziza by design, yes, that there was for the last several days a song of encounter of It's a New Day. Judith, our prophet friend down south, you encountered him in the fire and his healing fire blew into you and you breathed it in and there was physical healing in there. Mm. There is Martin house ministries there what a great name that you've been encountering an intercession that there's just been this encounter there patricia you're saying you had a life-changing encounter in the healing rooms where you went for physical pain but instead you had an encounter with jesus and you were baptized finally in his love there's just so much wow. here look we start to because this is how you overcome the religious spirit that is all yeah. about discipline connection by saying no god can be found um, yeah. absolutely and as you're listening to this let these encounters open up something for you to enter into these are not just stories that are nice to hear but these are doorways into encounter doorways into revelation they are in the spirit opening up something for you to run into and i want to share one of the most significant encounters i've had in my life there is a reoccurring place that i return to mm -hmm. and it was the first time i saw the eyes of fire of god and i remember i was uh, in a in a prayer room and i was praying and i was I, at the time i was so deeply struggling with my physical health with some of my mental health i was seeing relational breakdowns and i was so consumed by all these other things and i sat in this place of just god i know i can't get through this without you and he and suddenly i was in the spirit i was in a place i'd never been in it was dark everywhere but i was aware i was being held by a pair of hands like this i was standing on these hands and i knew there was safety in them and as i stood there at these hands suddenly before me these two enormous eyes opened and they burned with these flames that were orange and red on the outside but blue and white and pure on the inside and the burning of these eyes is it hit me mm -hmm. i 
was physically sweating and actually drew, actually came out of the encounter drenched in sweat from the wow. physical heat of what I was encountering in the spirit. And in that place, I remember gazing at these eyes, unable to take my face and my gaze off of these burning eyes of desire and of love. And I remember in that moment, the feeling of, and this word is so, uh, it feels so rubbish in the English language, but being totally satisfied yeah. with him in mm. every way. And I remember staying in that place and going, I will never need to eat or drink or sleep or speak to another human being. I will never need anything of this world because I have found everything I need in these eyes, in these mm. eyes that burn for longing for me and jealous for me, eyes that were healing my body and burning sickness off of my physical frame, eyes that were restoring relationship because he cared for me. But all I cared about was being found in that place. Mm. And that place of encounter so transformed my life. And it gave me this trajectory that said, where Whatever I go, whatever I do, he is worth everything because I have tasted the things of this world, but they do not satisfy like the eyes of the, of the one that I love, the one who gave everything for me. And I remember it healing so much of who I was. And even now it's the place where, where things of the world are tempting and things that are, when things aren't going well or I'm feeling stressed or I need healing, the place of standing on those hands and gazing at those eyes every time I return to that there is something that goes only you satisfy my soul only you meet my needs and it is a place where I'm like there is nothing like standing in the fire of his gaze mm. in the heat and the warmth of his oh. gaze there's nothing like it and it is the thing that keeps my life on track of going all in and everything I have because nothing satisfies even you know the beautiful smiles i get from my child from my baby and the those warm touches from a friend it, there is nothing there is nothing that touches the satisfaction of those eyes mm, wow. wow and then you know as we were sharing these encounters as hannah said before she shared her story we are kicking open the door for you to have encounters for yourself not just our encounters you have the same you have your own for your own self as well Karis, do you want to share yeah i mean oh, wow <laughs> i just want to sit in hannah's honestly that was so good <laughs> um i had um i had an encounter which kind of has set off uh, a series where the the lord has kind of been taking me through uh, it was actually at our rp so it was a few weeks ago but um we, we were in the, the kind of place where we were singing a new song by Ali and it was kind of working with that scripture. Interesting, Hannah, you were looking at the eyes of fire. Uh, I was staring at the feet of bronze and I couldn't stop looking at his feet. And normally I'm looking at his eyes, but I just couldn't stop looking at his feet. And I felt the drawing of the Holy Spirit and the Lord saying, I want you to gaze at my person and I want you to meditate on each aspect of my physical person. I want you to see my eyes. I want you to see my hair. I want you to see the sword coming out of my mouth. I want you to meditate on those spaces and kind of got, as God has been taking me on that for those who, um, like you might not know, but I am a quite a, a physical person. So when it comes to, funnily enough, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about my essay, but it, it does actually tie in. I'm writing an essay on glory and the glory in the gospel of John. And um, when it comes to intelligent, cognitive things, sometimes I struggle because I'm such a physical person and um things that are just in my head i really struggle with sometimes i struggle to grapple it and when it's just words on a page and i really felt that the lord was saying the more you gaze at my glory the more you gaze at my person the more you fix your eyes on me the more you will get a revelation of my character because that's what happens to moses he says show me your glory and the lord reveals his character to him and i knew that the lord was saying if you 
partner with me in that space if you watch and you keep coming back to those places of encounter which he's been unlocking for me by gazing at the different places of who he is and the different um, physical aspects of him I will have a greater revelation of his character and therefore be able to translate the, um, the measure of his character when I'm essay writing and it's it's been incredible because it's been so much further than just a cognitive experience it's been an encounter experience that is, is starting feeding into my essay writing and this weekend I'm excited because I know that I'm going to have an encounter with his glory as I write about his glory and because it's a it's going to be an interconnected moment of encounter and writing and word and intellect and all of it coming together so that's what God has been opening up for me. And maybe there's those of you who are quite similar to me and struggle cognitively. Let the Lord open up your mind to encounter. And actually you can have those experiences in those places when you're writing, when you're reading, whatever it might be. Let him open, open that up for you because it's really, really powerful. Come on, come on. So right now in the name of Jesus, I speak to every place where your encounter life is capped where you have been wedged in tradition or wedged even into a corner by that demon of religion that wants to make you disconnected rather than connected. And I break that off you right now in the name of Jesus. And every place that demon of religion has come to you and has become an indwelling spirit where you even feel shame and guilt because God feels too hard to find. I break that off and I call that spirit up and out right now in Jesus name and every place that disconnection demon of religion has occupied your inner world and has taught you even over years that God is hard to find that God is hard yeah. to find I break that right now and I say to that demon of religion you get up and you get out and some of you just blow it out and right in the chat I break the lie that God is hard to find. And I yeah. feel like that declaration, that breaking is a key in getting this demon of religion dislodged. And for some of you, it is stuck here in your chest. And you just need to expel that demon by saying, I break the lie that God is hard to find. And yeah. you need to, start to write that in the chat because God can be found and he has made you to find him. And religion tells you that you need methods and traditions and endless crooked paths to wiggle your way into proximity. But Jesus and the fullness of Christ by the cross, by his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension and the giving of the spirit tells you that by the spirit through Jesus, he is easy to find. Mm -hmm. that connect with him. That you meet with him that actually the new testament tells us in corinthians that he who unites himself with the lord is one with him in spirit and so now you are a house for the union of your spirit and god and you don't mm. find him as a hard to find out your god you find them as the god who dwells in your body who dwells in your spirit with your spirit who makes you a temple therefore you are the place the destination of encounter yes. He is not yes. hard to find. He is easy to find. And I speak to that ugly demon of religion that would want to tell you otherwise. And I say, your time is up in Jesus' yes. name. You now let go. And I release a momentum, a momentum of encounter to you where you now jump out of observation. Because observation is the practice of religion and the practice of the demon of religion. And you step fully into encounter yes. and participation. There's that verse 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. That's you that verse is talking about. You are united with the Lord and one with him in spirit. Now let me take this into another conversation uh, on this same uh, track. And actually I might hand to you, Hannah, for a moment because you're talking about encounter unto something that we yeah. get lost in encounter for encounter's sake but that there must be an en encounter in the spirit of god but that then that has a manifestation so yeah we're going to talk about that and that will take us into the next part of our conversation 
Yeah, let's start with reading 1 Corinthians 2, 4 and 5. It says, Paul says this, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with demonstrations of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on man's wisdom, but on God's power. And I and the Lord has been speaking to me that he is bringing his people into the places of understanding what it means to be the temple of God, to carry the manifestation of his spirit. And Karis brought an excellent word about liberating your body. But actually what we're talking about in that is becoming the manifestation of the spirit of God. Yeah. If yeah. God who turned up in scripture came as fire and came as smoke and came as a wind and came in his power and his might, if the fullness of that God dwells in us and chooses us as his temple, then surely that as we go about our lives, we should be the demonstration and the manifestation of his presence where we go. And the spirit yeah. of God has been saying it is time for us not just to sit in the places of encounter, but from the places of encounter become the manifestation of that encounter wherever you go it is the call for us and to us to be like samson who had supernatural strength by the power of god to be like elijah who could outrun chariots by the spirit of god to be like peter that shadow could heal because they had so become the dwelling place and the encounter place of the spirit of god that they they started to manifest who he is. And I believe this is the time where God is saying, I, I will come in the corporate expression. I will come in these places and the buildings that you have. But actually, first, I am coming to meet with you that you may become the manifestation of my spirit where you are to truly understand what Paul was saying when he says you are the temple and the dwelling place of God. That is not something that is hidden and silent within us. But there yes. is a spread that comes out and the spirit of God's desperation to be made known and to be seen through us is crying out in a way that I have never heard before the desperation of the spirit of God to be manifest in and through us and actually we pray the prayers don't we God would you do this in me would you would you you know would my shadow heal people would I would I have that kind of authority but actually God is saying that is in us but it is time to break off the false understandings of what being a uh, you know holy or full or whole is or to break off these kind of preconceived understandings and mindsets of what it looks like to walk in depth of relationship with God and it is time to kill control and to kill fear that says this is what it should look like when God comes to me this is how it should be when the spirit of God lands on me and it is time for us to be the fullness of the manifestation of his presence and it's time that we see more than what uh you know more than what we've what we've seen before it is time that we are ones that as we go the fire of god comes with us and it burns off sickness from people that the fire yes. of god comes that people fall in fear and trembling because they know the presence of god is in their midst and the lord's mm -hmm. desperation for his spirit spirit to be manifest through us is coming in such a tangible way and it really is these steps of encounter moving from observation into those encounter into the manifestation of his spirit very good hannah you need to apply what you acquire by encounter you cannot yes. just keep it to yourself to yourself mm -hmm. you need to apply what you acquire yeah. and i love pentecost that it was a moment of deep personal encounter of deep personal infilling they were all filled personally but it happened corporate corporately in community and then there was an application as then what they were filled with what they acquired by encounter was then applied to the people and there was this cascade of a move of god and so when you encounter you acquire something you then need to apply it and steward it it is about being good stewards of what you have and your encounters need to move from kind of just being up here to having a real life impact in your body yeah. 
and, and your your life and, and your mind and, and your personality as well. And where there has been a disconnect of that is because there has not yet been a submission of your physical life. And um, you can submit yeah. your spirit and, and, and forget to, oh, maybe I need to submit my body. But actually, that is such a key in this encounter where you encounter God. You don't observe, you participate, but you say, I want my body to follow suit. I want my yes. mind to follow the encounter, being led by the spirit, not just in my spirit, but then in my mind, in my emotions and in my body, where you move, as Hannah, you were saying, from encountering the spirit of God to then the manifestation of the encounter with the spirit of God yes. in our bodies. And we need to defeat that disconnect. I know you have some stuff on that, that, that there is this disconnect even uh, uh, there. Do you want to take us on um, what Hannah was saying? Yes. I mean, first of all, I just, I love what you're saying about how much the Lord desires and wants to be encountered how much he wants to be encountered so much so that he literally made us the place of encounter that other people can encounter him in us and i'm not saying that we in ourselves become god i'm saying we become that case we become that temple we become the place where people meet God. Uh, and there's been a there is a disconnect because we spend so much time within the space, even just of the church, and almost gatekeeping the spirit of God, when we're meant to be the display of the spirit of God to those who do not yet know him. You know, we have to go back down the mountain. We have to go and take it where it needs to go. But yeah, when we were talking about disconnect, this is something that I kind of broke down in um on sunday and it was something that i was thinking about quite specifically because we think a lot about our own encounter and also our own personal boldness and how we get ourselves to the place where i feel confident enough to be all of the things that we're saying today like uh, how do i get myself to the place of uh, being the fire and being the wind like that sounds like really intense just for me to do by myself but where the disconnect comes is i think it's really well well, um, and I know you want to go into this, um, Sam, um, where this really comes in is when you see the story of David and Michael in 2 Samuel 6. And um, we're seeing the story where David is dancing with all of Israel as they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David, while Michael is behind a window and watching from afar. And there's a disconnect that's happening in that moment where David is in the place of the presence and he's in the place of the people of God, while Michael is over there and he's she's disconnected from the presence and from the people. And when it comes to things like encounter and carrying encounter with us, there's something where it has to start to connect because it has to be where we're with the people and we're with the presence and we're not isolated in our encounter and we're not keeping it just for ourselves. But actually there's something of the corporate togetherness where we come together and I say, actually my boldness will go a lot further when I'm with the people of God. And my, yeah. and my fire and my and my drive will go a lot further when I'm with the people of God. That's why we have the body of Christ. Is that yes, I'm personally a temple of the Holy Spirit, but I'm also part of a body that's meant to carry encounter and meant to bring encounter to the um to the people who do not yet know the Lord. And I'm not called to do that isolated by myself, but I'm called to do that with other people. And I'm called to do that while I am in the place of the presence of God. So that is where the disconnect can happen, where we're either, we're so behind this kind of sin, we're so observational, like we've been saying, you're so observational, you can't participate. And also your heart can't even be moved by wildness, can't even be moved by encounter because you're so isolated from it. But when you get in the place of the presence of God and the place of encounter with other people, that's when things start to connect. Mm, very good. And the place of the corporate belonging that actually we need one another to, if we're talking about wildness in the church, you actually yeah. can get to the full wildness of the kingdom of God, isolated and by yourself. We need to call out wildness in one another and push mm. each other into wild spinning worship. Look, about six months ago, the Lord introduced me 
um, to a new assignment. And it was an assignment that I was aware I was to hold as I traveled into different nations and into different areas. And he pulled in in front of me a demon, a strong man demon, a, a demon who was in charge of many others who had a particular remit towards the church. And he said, Sam, this is your job to make sure that wherever you go, you liberate a people from this particular demon. And this demon, this strong man, was formed, was neat, was tidy, was put together. He was in control. He was measured. He seemed cool, calm, and collected. And he introduced himself as the mature man of the church and said that he was in charge of maturity in church and obviously he is a demon and he is a principality a demon of false maturity and i believe that there is this war in the church between maturity and false maturity yeah. and this strong man has had more victory in shaping what maturity looks like than we would be brave enough to admit and the lord said this to me this strong man has been sent to domesticate what i intended to be wild to celebrate cynicism over expectation to champion the subdued over the extravagantly passionate to complicate what I have called to be simple, to make you skeptical rather than desperate. And the Lord said this, this job, this demon has had one job, and it is to convince you that you're like David when you're actually like David's wife, Michael, who Caris just spoke about. Because David, in true maturity, wildly spun in worship, yet in false maturity. His wife, disconnected and isolated, rolled her eyes and wow. her womb got shut up. And this false maturity demon, this strong man of maturity in the church is in charge of our eye roll at wildness. And we all do it. And we roll our eyes at wildness and it makes us uncomfortable because this false maturity has so clothed us with misshapen ideas of what it is to be trusted by God. And the Lord says this, subduedness does not equal maturity in my kingdom. In my Come kingdom, on. wildness equals maturity. And God is saying, I am the God who spins and I am the God who dances and I sing over you like in Zephaniah. And the Lord is saying, I am the wild God and I am looking for a people who will seek to match me in my wildness, says God. For who wants to match me in my wildness? And he says, you now need to take off your David's wife cloaks you need to take off your david's wife tendencies your michael tendencies and start to seek to match god and his wildness but when he spins and he dances and he sings you seek to match him whether you think you can or you're not where he mm -hmm. turns up with an extreme of glory you seek to respond to his extreme with an extreme response because false maturity is the eye roll and it's the eye roll at wildness and guess what happens to michael she may, gets made barren her womb gets shut up her womb and her fruitfulness gets shut down and cynicism stops fruitfulness and i wonder if we do not have the generational legacy that we would like to because we're falsely mature rather than truly kingdom mature in our wildness we think we're david when we're actually david's wife and the lord is saying remember oh my people that i have called you to be a people of extremes extreme worship extreme encounters extreme life 
extreme praise, extreme presence, extreme transformation, extreme glory, extreme movement, extreme joy, extreme miracles, extreme power, extreme togetherness, that we are to be like David and not like David's wife. And there is this word that God is putting right down deep inside of us where he's saying, I am dealing with false maturity in my house. I am dealing with false maturity for this demon has washed you and you think you know what maturity is, but actually it's false, it's wrong. It is a pretender to maturity. I'm looking yeah. for two mature ones who are mature enough to lay down their lives and submit not just their minds, but their bodies to me and to match me or seek to match me in my wildness. And the Lord is saying, look, this demon of false maturity, it is the religious spirit. It is, mm. it's just another form. We're hitting on it again and again and again and again. And this space where he's saying, I want to catch you up into encounters, yes, but I want to see evidence of those encounters in your physical life. Mm, I want to catch you up into moments, yes, but I want to see the evidence yeah. in your life. I want to see your evidence in your church going and in your worship and in your outworking of life with me and your daily life of sharing me and of sharing the spirit and of sharing what I am doing in your life. I don't want to just see you have encounter without action and manifestation. Your encounter, I want to be able to observe, the Lord says, and I want to be able to observe it on your physical frame. I want to be able to observe it in your language and your communication. Yeah. I want to watch that you've encountered me by how you respond in worship. Where are those, the Lord says, who will seek to match me in my wildness? Come on. Karis, do you want to comment on that or share or take it on anywhere? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually, I feel a bit emotional because I feel like even as I'm reading some of the comments and I feel, see so many people just feeling so liberated by what you're saying, but also so isolated at the same time. And it's just, it's the robbery of the religious spirit that has robbed the church of being the fullness of what it's called to be. And that is to be completely countercultural to the rest of the world and to be fully and completely kingdom and not worldly. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage those who are listening or I'm, I'm watching right now that are like, oh, I feel seen. Uh, but like, you know, just try and ignore um, what people are thinking and what the world is saying. And, like, and I hear the heart of that. They're being like, you know, you want to just ignore those things. But actually, maybe you're called to be the pioneer that sets things in, in motion and starts to welcome people into encounter rather than the temptation to isolate yourself like michael did um and isolate yourself to be like well i'll just have to keep my wild encounters by myself because no one else understands me but instead maybe it's just another shifting right now that the spirit of god is doing when i say no if i want if i call you to a wild one it's because you're called to be a catalyst for other yeah. people to be more wild people need to see wildness and whatever that it was that was provoked in michael when she saw david dancing and he was dancing with all of israel all being wild all being extravagant she was the one that missed out in that moment but it provoked something in her and maybe there's an opportunity for deliverance for people when they see wildness displayed so that the demon manifests is is, is exposed and it's broken and it's released off of the church but that's only going to happen if we start to shift into the place of wild Wildness. And we partner with that word that Sam just said. It's not for us to and pull back and keep our wildness over there, but it's to start to be more extravagant, more in the place of, of, of eyes being seeing us, more in the place of people seeing the wildness of the church, because that's the point. And that we have to know that there is a big difference between chaos and wildness. Wildness is submitted to the spirit yeah. of God. Come chaos on, Karis. when we try to take control. Chaos is what happens when we Very try good. to take control.
control. Whereas wildness happens when we're submitted to the spirit of God. So if you're worried about chaos, then just put to side even your own worldly tendencies or your own needs of control or even the religion that sits in your bones, the need to control how things are done. But instead, if I'm submitted to the spirit of God and I am wild, that means that something good is happening. That mm -hmm. means that God is shifting something and it's completely different to what chaos is going to look. So take away fear of chaos. That's worldly. We're talking about the spirit of God, which is wild, extravagant and exciting for the church. And it's no mm -hmm. wonder that Emma was prophesying about this a few weeks ago at Power Church. She was talking about the generations and the youngest generation, Gen X, I think they was talking about the wild ones. They're going to be the wild ones, the wild worshipers, the wild pioneer, the wild ones, the ones that are. And I was like, no wonder the Lord has birthed the whole generation of wild ones because he's so desperate for the church to be fruitful in these next days and then in this next season. And if we don't catch up, we're going to miss out. Mm. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Anna. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> there's a, there's so much in that word, and I think you can kind of take a moment and just whoa, like breathe that in because there is something of the conviction of what we have lived in that we have thought we walked in maturity and it was false maturity. And there are moments of our even now, I think as Sam as you were speaking, I could feel my pride and some of my arrogance being challenged of what I thought was maturity and the Lord just taking a moment and highlighting that is not it. That was your false maturity and a, a, a repentance that many of us will feel of saying, I am sorry I have chosen to be Michael in the window rolling my eyes whilst those that have walked in the manifestation of your presence, who have walked in wildness, who have been a demonstration of who you are, have gone out and I have judged them. And I think this highlights to us as well what the enemy has done in terms of the gaining of ground of what the manif manifestations in the church look like and who they belong to because we sit and we roll our eyes at the wildness of people in the presence of God, because the enemy has taught us a lie that says manifestations either belong to the flesh and they're there for attention or manifestations are demonic. And I think what wow, we are yeah. coming against is this lie that sits in the church that if I see wildness expressed through manifestations of his presence, then I have to judge that. I have to be um, cynical of that, that my preconceived ideas that almost what we've done is so rationalized our mm -hmm our experience of the presence of God that we have not wanted to give into the emotions of it, that we have become so desensitized to the things of the spirit, or we have ascribed it to the enemy. And I believe the Lord is saying, even through this, that he is bringing to the church a new level of the discerning of spirits, that we will be able to discern clearly what is the spirit of God in our midst and what is of the flesh and what is of the enemy. But I feel Feel the Lord saying this first, that you will receive it with great joy, that actually when you see wildness expressed, that he is changing our hearts to be the ones that ex receive it with great joy, but join in with the expression of wildness rather than sitting and judging it. And I believe God is shifting our understanding and our mindset, but he is exposing the ground the enemy has taken in the manifestations within the church of what it looks like when the spirit turns up and it it really is this time where God is saying, let me give you that discerning gift, but first run in with the fullness. And I think, Samuel, that decree of that I will seek to match God in my wildness. I think if we live by that, if I turn up to everything I do, saying I seek to match God in his wildness. What if my seeking of his, of to match him in his wildness is the catalyst that breaks something open around the people where I am? 
What if that wild expression is the thing that pulls other people into a wildness? What if that is the key to breakthrough? What if that is the thing that's looking for? But I think what we do is we we judge before we've actually discerned. And we judge what we see before we've discerned the spirit behind it. And I think about you know Saul being blinded on the road to Damascus or Zechariah being muted in the by by God. If we saw those things now, we would quickly not even discern it but say that's the enemy Mm -hmm. there's blindness there's muteness that's the enemy but that was God in both those occasions and I believe that the Lord is saying will I will you receive this gift of the discerning of spirits that I may come and you may trust that when my spirit turns up and wildness is explored and wildness bursts out that you will not judge it but that you will understand and discern what is freedom? What is liberation? And I really believe this is a word, Sam, that you've brought that is exposing what the enemy has won within the believers in terms of the manifestations of his presence. And it is time that we rewrite that narrative and we claim that ground back that manifestations belong to God and manifestations hey. and the demonstration of his presence belongs to God. And yes, the demonic do manifest in us, but... God is bigger and more able and he is greater. And if we can believe that a demon can manifest out of us, how much more powerful is God to manifest through us? And I think it's a changing of our understanding that we go first, God is this you, but it is a growth in our maturity to say, I will learn to discern the spirits. Mm, Come on, come on. You need to say that I will learn to discern the spirits. Type that in the comments. Look, you know, for years we have been on our journey of defining two kingdoms. There are only two kingdoms, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of this world, which are the kingdoms of Satan and the kingdoms of darkness. And let's just categorize, even Karis as you so helpfully brought as well, wildness belongs to the kingdom of God. Chaos yes. belongs to the kingdom of darkness. And so when yes. we say wildness, we are making sure that we are reclaiming that and reattributing it to God. And the Lord yes. started to speak to me particularly about how we had watched in the world wildness. And we had watched the world increase in its wildness, the wildness of its performance and of its arts and of its creativity. And in a bid to be different than the world, which is a right motive in many ways, that the enemy had come in and had used scripture to deceive us and had used the misunderstanding of come out from among them, be separate. That's uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Come out from among them and be separate. That the enemy had used that as a verse to make us tame in comparison to the world that is wild. And God said this, remember, you are to outwild the world. You are to outwild the world in your worship and in your creativity and your brave, daring, risk-taking and what you build and what you produce. And the Lord says, Satan would have it said, the world is wild, the church is tame. But I would have it say, the world is chaotic, but the church is wild. The world is in chaos, but the church is to be a people of wild devotion and a wild uh, worship and wild creativity in so many ways. He says, remember, you are to out wild the world. That is your job, not to, in being different, make yourself more tame, but to make yourself more wild in your devotion to me. And can I say this wildness in the church that's our theme for this afternoon? It is about worship, but I believe that it also goes into so many different ways, that it goes into our creativity, our dreams. How often are our plans for church just tame and stale? And they're not as wild as God would have them to be, but we are wild in our devotion to one another. We are wild in our pursuit of truth, that we are wild in our desire to see the kingdom of God manifest in the world in, in the world with power that we are wild in our desire for deliverance that we are wild in our music and our creativity yeah. and our sound and how we turn up to church and how we gather that we outwild the world 
because God is saying, I'm putting wildness back in the church. I'm offering you a choice, maturity or false maturity. You choose. In other words, who are you going to be, David or David's wife? The choice is yours. Come on. Well, we have had an hour. Caris, you kick-started this. I wonder if you could just pray for us. You kick yeah. the door open on Sunday with, with your word. You should pray for us on the back as we finish. Because yeah. there's been so much here. <laughs> yes, Lord, we thank you that you have called us to be wild and not just wild before you, but wild before the world, wild in the way that we do things, wild as we led by the spirit, God. And I speak to every single um, false, mature spirit that is lingering around the people of God and those who are watching right now. And I tell you, you will get off these people right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak a Holy Spirit reorientating of how you work with the spirit of God and how you interact with the spirit of God with encounter and even how you interact with the spirit of God with other people and with the people in your community. I bless you to be a demonstration, to be a display and to show the glory of God, not simply just in your word, but in your demonstration of your body, in the liberation of your body and with the complete wildness of your lifestyle as you give everything that you have to give to him for his glory and his fame and his kingdom kingdom on the earth in the name yeah. of jesus amen. amen 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 well thank you for joining us today for another episode of power our wildness in the church you need to comment on this like it and share it as the word of the lord goes out we want to make sure that people everywhere get to hear what god is saying and know how to partner with him and as well if you've been blessed by this broadcast and what is so into our ministry so we continue to do power hour and so many other broadcasts that we have coming soon then please do consider giving us a gift offering www.propheticscots.com slash give and uh, we are so grateful for all the way that you support us prayerfully and financially as well otherwise we will see you live on sunday for power church we also put out a video three times a week mondays wednesdays and fridays called decree the week it's only 60 seconds and they will shift your day as you partner with us and you listen to them. But if you want to be trained in hearing the voice of God, our Prophetic Warrior 101 Academy is yeah. soon. And we are here in May in Glasgow. It's an in-person school where we are inviting you to be trained, equipped, and activated by the uh, GPA team. Emma is teaching, I'm teaching. We're all getting involved. Louise is teaching. There's the whole team are there. You'll hear from Hannah, you'll hear from Caris, uh, Jennifer, Louise, Nigel, Nicola, David, all of us as we and we share with you what we have learned about hearing the voice of God. Otherwise, we will see you this time next week for episode 285 of Power Hour. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.